Hello everyone, this is Ogaya Azerbaijan, and today we have another great artist from Eurovision. At 22 years old, a Maltese singer, songwriter, and pianist who had been playing the piano and singing since the age of five. Let's welcome the one and only Emma Muscat. I am what I am. I am what I am. Feeling backwards, trying to beat it. Oh, made them understand, yeah. Take it or leave it. I am what I am. Hi, Emma. How are you doing? Hi. I'm good, thank you. Emma, before starting our interview, can you please introduce yourself? Who is Emma Muscat? Yes. Um, so my name is Emma Muscat, and I'm representing Water this year in Eurovision with the song I Am What I Am. Uh, Emma, professionally, you started your career after participating in Amici di Maria di Filippi. So what, do, what does uh, such competitions give to young artists like you? Well, it definitely gives a lot of opportunity and it helps me grow as an artist. I think through competitions like these, you get to know more about yourself, more about music, more about how to work with other artists um, in a contest. Um, how to interact with audiences. So definitely, this is a, grow, a growth curve. Um, so yeah, I would say that taking part in the program Amici really did help me um, in life, and especially now with Eurovision. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Emma, how does living in Italy actually influence you um, in choice of music genre and etc.? cetera? Mm. Well, it's a very busy lifestyle. But um, I would say my influences don't come from living in Italy. My influences come probably from the music I listen to. Um, I listen to a lot of classical music and a lot of pop music too. Um, so I would say my influences are mostly from there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, then actually, since you are talking about influences, so can you uh, tell uh, which artists influenced you musically? Um, quite a few actually. I would probably say growing up, Alicia Keys, um, who else? Aretha Franklin, the greats, Freddie Mercury, and uh, the band Queen. Um, Italian artist, I would say Zucchero. Yeah, that's probably it. Great. And then, uh, Emma, you worked uh, with great names. You were opening an uh, act for Rita Ora as well as Martin Garrix. Uh, so what did it mean for you? It was an absolute honor to be sharing the same stage as them. Um, and yeah, it was just literally I was speechless when I found out I want to be like singing before them. It was just like, wow, I was mind blown. And it was just an incredible experience. I think got to meet them backstage and it was just, I felt so important, you know, just being around such huge artists. So it was an incredible experience. You actually also duetted, for example, with Eros, Eros uh, Ramazzetti as well as uh, Joseph uh, Kalea. How did this collaboration started? So basically, Joseph Kalea is a world-renowned Maltese tenor. He's one of the best tenors um, worldwide. And he hosts a concert once a year here in Malta. And in 2018, he hosted um, a concert here in Malta with the guest artist Eros Ramazzotti. He also invited me to perform at the concert. So that's basically how the collaboration came around because I collaborated with both Joseph Kalea himself and Eros Ramazzotti. And I must say it was an incredible experience having the opportunity to perform with such big, like world-renowned artists like them. Mm -hmm. And Emma, um, even like you are young, you already released your first album Moments, uh, which is a top 10 of Fimi chart for three consecutive weeks. So what yes. was the magic? The magic, my voice. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember when I released it, I couldn't even believe it. I was number one for three weeks and it's just, it was just such a, a record for me. Um, I, was, I was so grateful for my whole team and for, every, for everyone who supported me and my music basically. And then this year you uh, actually decided to participate in MESC. Um, what was the trigger for you to participate um, in Eurovision Song Contest, let's say? 
Um, well, definitely the fact that I wanted to take on the challenge and the responsibility of representing my nation in Eurovision. So that's basically what triggered it. I wanted a new challenge. Mm -hmm. Actually, were you expecting to get the top votes of both the jury and uh, televoters? How did it feel? I honestly wasn't expecting it because there was a lot of competition in the in MESC. And there were a lot of like, you know, different polls saying who was going to win, who wasn't, you know, so it was a very tense moment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when I won, it was just an incredible feeling. I mean, I didn't expect to get maximum votes from the jury and the public. So I was really grateful. I was mm, speechless. Literally, I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Emma, why did you actually uh, change your song? Um, is it like, uh, it's not for, uh, for the first time that it's happening in the Maltese no. Song Contest? So basically, the Maltese actually wanted it to change after they voted it for me. They, the majority of the Maltese actually expressed their wish for the song to be changed. So I took that into consideration. And um, then I also realized that Out of Sight was, was a song very personal to me, whilst probably I am what I am, not probably, it is like a song with a stronger, more powerful message, which is a message about self-love. And it's more relatable to many, to many more people. And Eurovision being such a, a massive platform with over 200 million viewers, I wanted a song with a more powerful message um, that could have touched more people and reached more hearts. Mm -hmm. You are actually also one of the songwriters of uh, of your own song, um, uh, among others like you know Metan Hotzich and Julie Agard, as well as Sine Knick. So, um, can you tell me like uh, what's like um, in personal level of of the message for you, since you you are the writer of the song? Basically, what happened is that the song was written um, a year ago, actually, in a songwriting camp in Palma de Mallorca, specifically for Eurovision. The song, they never found the right artist um, for the song, but when I heard it after um, the national final, the Maltese national final, I immediately fell in love with it. Um, so basically, they pitched the song to me, I fell in love with it, and I said, okay, I've got to make this my own. So that, at that moment in time, I personalized it. I changed some lyrics around, changed the feel of the song. We added the gospel choir. We um, took off the original like instrument and we added the piano. So that's basically how my input into the song comes in. I personalized it to make it more my own. And um, by working with the team was, absolutely great they were so professional and lovely to work with we did numerous video calls as well since we had to work at distance because of the short time frame and it was just absolutely lovely working with them they were very very professional and i really enjoyed my time working with them mm -hmm. and it's a very beautiful song actually uh do you think the message of the song is delivered uh, through the music video yes most definitely um, I actually, well, came up with the idea of the music video myself. We filmed it in Milan with Warner Music. And basically, I wanted to convey um, a very powerful message with a very simple video. So that was my, my scope, mm -hmm. um, to get different kinds of people into my video to show everybody that no matter who we are, um, what we look like, what we want to be, how we feel, we're all equal, we're all perfect, we're all beautiful the way we are. So we can't let anyone else tell us otherwise. So basically, it's an anthem for self-love. Um, what to expect at Eurovision in 2022? So how, how you are gonna stand out? Well, how am I gonna stand out? I'm just gonna be myself and I'm gonna give an absolutely great performance. We've got lovely staging. It's gonna be a very powerful performance and there's gonna be definitely, definitely be a power moment in the in the song so that's basically it great and uh, have you heard uh, the other songs which you are competing against and if i ask to pick one uh, whom you will give your 12 points myself <laughs> i'm joking <laughs> i'm joking um no but if i had to listen 
Well, if I had to choose one country to give my 12 points to, probably I would choose my second home, Italy. Yeah, my more than Blanco. <laughs> and what is one thing from your home country that uh, you simply cannot go to Turin without? From Malta, probably Kini and Twist Peas. Their Kini is a Maltese drink, a Maltese soft drink. And Twisties is a typical Maltese like snack, cheese snack. <laughs> nice. And Emma, do you have any message for your fans? Um, yes, I do. So my song, like I said, speaks about self-love. So don't forget sometimes to just stop, take some time for yourself and love mm. yourself because we come first and we are the person we're going to spend the rest of our lives with. So we've got to take care of ourselves. Very beautiful message. And uh, Emma, can you sing a little of your song? Mm, I'll try. In the morning, my voice isn't great, but... <laughs> I am what I am. I am what I am. Bimbling backwards, trying to beat it. All made them on a stand, yeah. Take it or leave it. I am what I am. Wow, very beautiful voice. I had to sing in the lower key because my <laughs> voice is destroyed this morning. <laughs> Emma, thank you very much for this interview. It's so great to meet you and um, you. I'm, I'm wishing you very good luck. And uh, okay. definitely we have to meet in Turin. I'll see you there then. Yes, see you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye.